Now it's my pleasure to introduce John Walters of the 65th Regiment Reenactment Society, whose great great grandfather Benjamin Wells fought at Rangiriri. Tēnā koe, John. Hello, Scotty. First of all, tell me about this uniform. Is this the exact type of uniform that your grand great great grandfather wore? It is. Yes, it's uh, the belts and the bayonets and the straps, and it's made of wool. It's very heavy, very scratchy, and uh, very uncomfortable to wear. Mm. Big gathering in Rangiriri this Wednesday to commemorate uh, the battle that occurred there in 1863. Will you be there? Yes, I will. Yes, yep. with some more 65th reenactment regiment. And what do you think? How do you think you're going to feel when you get to Rangiriri, knowing that your great great grandfather was part of that battle? Mm, I'll feel humbled, but at the same time excited. This is this has taken a lot of putting together. Um, a lot of people have uh, contacted each other and um, uh, got this whole thing going, and um, it should be a very good day of remembrance, I think. And you're part of the reenactment society, so is the, is the whole reenactment society going there? And what what will you be doing? Uh, there will be uh, probably about eight of us there. We'll be joining with the New Zealand Defence Force troops. And we will be providing a guard of honour and also a ode and a salute in the cemetery afterwards for the um, grave sites of the Pākehā and the Māori. Why, why do you think it's important to commemorate, to commemorate events such as the Battle of Rangiriri? Do you think it's important that we understand New Zealand history, that all New Zealanders know New Zealand history? Yes, yes, it's very important, yes. Um, a lot of people, well, I was in school, I was basically taught that a treaty was signed, someone cut down a flagpole, and that's all that happened in New Zealand until the Boer War. Um, but there's just so much that happened, and it's rich history, and uh, a lot of it is unknown. Uh, small people in the, the back countries, we go and meet them in halls. I'm off to an event like that this afternoon. And they bring out old Taiaha and old Medi and, and all sorts of things, and especially stories that they have that their ancestors have passed on. Mm -hmm. And they love people to see these things and to handle them and to hear the stories that go with them. T tell us a little bit about the relationship between Māori and the 65th, 65th Regiment that your great-great-grandfather was part of. There, there was kind of a bit, you know, they were they were warring with each other, but there was kind of an understanding and even a bit of a bit of respect that developed during the, the course of the battle, didn't it? That's right, yes. The 65th came here uh, just after the, oh, just around about 1845, I think, 1846, and they stayed till about 1866. They were here for 20 years. Mm. In that time they fought all up and down the country, but they had a great deal of respect for the Maori. And the Maori also had respect for them. They were very polite to each other when they weren't trying to kill each other on mm -hmm. the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite often Maori sentries would come forward and call out to the Pākehā sentries at night, yeah, who are you? And, and when they got the reply, we're the 65th, they would say, ah, hickety pips. Hickety pips. Hickety pips. Why, why did they call them hickety pips? They couldn't say 65. So they were either hickety pips or hickety whiffs was the other one. But, but they'd call out 65th or hickety pips. You know fight tonight, we know fight tonight, OK? Yeah. And they were always good to their word. Both mm. sides would get a good sleep. And in the morning, one of the Maori would creep forward and call out, hickety pips, we have to start firing soon. Keep your heads down. Mm. And later on, at, in certain battles, uh, when the 65th with other troops were approaching a par site, uh, the Maori would call out, Hickety Pips, lie down so we can shoot the ones behind you who were right. of another regiment. Yes. Hey. There's a great hey. deal of respect on both sides. Your great great grandfather, Benjamin Wells, wasn't yes. looked after, was he? Tell us about that. He wasn't. He served 20 years in this country wearing this uniform, being shot at pretty much the whole time, marching up and down the country. Uh, a lot of when the regiment left for England, about a thousand of them stayed here and became settlers and they were granted a parcel of land each in Noni Hunger. He applied three times for the land. He was, he didn't hear a thing. He had to uh, get a lawyer in to actually write a letter to the government. And the government said, we can find no record of you. Mm. And he said, well, that's strange because I have the medal and I have the four good conduct stripes. And then they sent a letter back saying, oh yes, now we found you, but the time is up for this thing, it's too late. And he wrote a letter to the MP complaining about that, and the MP said, we'll put your name on a list, we'll see if we can do anything about it. Mm. Nothing happened. Uh, his wife left him, he had two daughters. He died a broken man in a poor home. He had uh, skin cancer from being out in the sun for 20 years in this country. Mm -hmm. It's very sad.
So, so both sides sort of, you know, really didn't come out of this. No, well, not they? too well. No, there were wrongs <laughs> done to the Parker colonial right. forces as well, wasn't there? Yes, it was. It, it, yeah. You said there were three versions of how the battle ended. One of the versions yes. was just in the report there about how there was a truce, and then 180 prisoners, Maori, Maori were mm -hmm. taken prisoners. What were some of the other versions about how Rangi Didi ended? Uh, the other version is that um, the, during the night the uh, troops were digging a sap and they were planning to undermine the redoubt and they were going to bring up a keg of gunpowder and blow it up and they, some people say that's when the surrender flag was shown. Mm. Uh, there's another version that says the flag on the Pioneer gunboat, which was the white ensign flag at the time, it's mostly white with a little Union Jack up in one corner that was hanging limp and some of them mistook that for mm. a flag of truce or parley and they raised their flag in mm. response. Uh, there's a third version that say that uh, they put the flag up because they wanted to come forward and buy some more gunpowder so they could carry on the battle. A lot of different versions. Yes, <laughs> I, Who knows which one is I, the right I'm one? I'm not sure myself. John, myself. appreciate you coming in this morning and, and all the best for the commemorations coming up this oh. Wednesday and, of course, with your reenactment society and everything that you do. Thank you very much. We appreciate you, it. Very interesting talking Wonderful. to you. Now,